shout of praise because he is absolutely true to his word. Amen. All y'all coming in late, be sure and get your seed, your tithe, and your offering out in your hand. Praise the Lord. You, didn't, you missed some of the best word already. Amen. Tell that person who's walking in and say, God wants you rich. Just tap him right there and say, don't play with this. Let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Anthony, you good? Look at Anthony back there. All the muscles bulging out. Anthony looked like he's ready to start something. Anthony, I'm feeling kind of, kind of frisky and manly today. Like I might punch you just out of, just out of craziness. I'm just kidding, Anthony. No, look. <laughs> hey, what am I saying? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Y'all, don't, don't be a broke down Christian. Get on, on what God's doing and get it all. Get it all. Get every bit of it. Don't settle for sickness. Don't just settle for a headache and go, oh, well, that's just a headache. Let me get the Excedrin. No, 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 no. This is the body of Christ. I'm not settling for that. Are you with me? Don't settle for broke. Talk it every day. Speak to your money. Speak to your body. Command it to be so. And don't settle for it. Don't settle. Don't settle for sick and broke down. Jesus paid too much of a price for it for us to settle for it. And just like a child, you know how a child will test you? Y'all got kids? They'll test you to see how far you're going to let them go. Come on. You remember when you was in high school? I remember my first curfew on my first date. My first date, I was going out with this girl named Dana Phillips, prettiest girl in the neighborhood. I was amazed she wanted to go out with me. Went out, and my dad said, be home at 12 midnight. I came in home at about 12.20 to my dad sitting right there waiting for me. <laughs> he said, how you doing, son? I said, well, uh, I'm doing pretty good. When I started making an excuse. He said, hand those keys over. He said, when I mean 12, I don't mean 20 after 12, and I don't mean 20 seconds after 12. I never came home late after that. <laughs> I knew he wasn't playing. Right. So you got you to gotta let yourself yeah. and the kingdom of hell know I'm not playing. Right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? It, it'll, it, 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 it'll give you a whole new swagger. Yeah. Amen. Let me, y'all, got, y'all got your Bible? Yeah. Grab your Bible in your hand. Did I already do this? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Grab your Bible. All right. Grab your Bible. Let's make this faith confession together real loud and strong. Say it. Come on. Come on. Right. That, yes, you are. Uh huh. That's yes, you do. Uh huh. Then I shall and all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give God the biggest shout of praise you've given Him all day. You know, I appreciate uh, Cinco de Mayo. Didn't everybody do a great job? They did, uh, we plan to do that more often than just May 5th because they did such a great job. And I, and, uh, I was telling them, I said, you know, uh, I said, do, do the Hispanics have a great word or grace church around here? And she said, well, no, they kind of all split up and go into a whole bunch of different churches. I said, well, I got a building sitting right over there. Maybe they might want to start having some church over here if one of y'all preached to them real good. We got some good singers. Get, a, get everybody together. And just bring some food so I can come over after service over here. Because I want some good... Well, praise the Lord. Let me, I'm always thinking about food. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Did we, we did the faith confession. Turn over in your Bible real quickly to Romans chapter 1. I bet you can guess what verse. 16 and 17. Are y'all ready? I may not use all these notes. I've got a bunch of notes that I made just sitting at, uh, in my office just now, and I may get to those, but let's look at this. Look at this. Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Christ. The gospel is the good news. Euangelion, the good tidings, glad tidings, good news. The Bible, Paul calls the gospel the good news, not some good news. It's good news if you get a promotion at work. Good news if somebody gets healed. He says, no, no, no. This is the good news. The good news of Christ. Amen. The good news. Y'all know what I'm talking Definite article. The good news. This is the good news. It's good news to everybody. The word gospel, uh, good news, is always, whenever you hear the word gospel, you always have to think in the context of grace. The, we, we talked about this. This is why the devil hates the true gospel being preached because the true gospel is nothing but good news to every single person. And it's no requirement other than to believe it. Jesus paid for every bit of it. 
So that's why the devil taints the true gospel with a bunch of requirements of what you need to do. You don't need to do anything for the gospel other than just believe it. Are you with me? But now when people hear the gospel because it's so rarely preached, uh, it's, it sounds foreign. It sounds too good to be true. But that's just, that's just indicative that it is the gospel. It's the good news. What's good news if you're poor? You ain't got to be poor anymore. What's good news if you're sick? What's good news if you're all bound up in sin? You're free. You're the righteousness of God. It is the good news for every situation, blinded eyes being opened, sick bodies being healed. Jesus said, I came to preach this year of, of jubilee, freedom, liberty. Come on, somebody. It's good news to everybody you know. All right? It's the glad tidings, glad tidings. The good news is so good it makes you glad. I know, that's what it is, glad tidings, it's good news, watch. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ, and it always relates to the gospel, we'll get back to that. For it, this good news of the gospel is the definite article, power of God. Now, if the gospel is the power of God, and you were the devil, what would you attack? The gospel, why? Because the gospel, if the gospel is tainted, if it's contaminated, if it's defiled in any way, it affects the power of God for salvation, to soteria, healing, to abundance, to preservation, to deliverance, right? The word soteria, put my definition up there so they can write this. You got to get out of your mind that salvation is just going to heaven. That's just the end part of it. You're supposed to have heaven here on earth. Our days were as heaven upon the earth. The Bible says it's like we were in a dream. Don't settle for less than that. You get what I mean? Don't sit there going, oh, praise the Lord. You know, I'm just climbing up the rough side of the mountain. No, you're not. Watch this. Salvation is this. I took it straight out of Strong's. Deliverance, preservation, safety, the sum of the benefits and blessings purchased by Christ at the cross. Every every blessing of redemption is what salvation is, all right? You've got it all. uh, I could go through a bunch of scriptures and tell you what it is, but here it is in a nutshell. Everything that's a problem, Jesus fixed it at the cross. Everything that is a problem for you, Jesus gave the answer in the cross. Are you with me? All right, all right, put, uh, put my verse back up there, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the good news, the gospel of Christ, for it is the dunamis, by the word, that word power there is dunamis, right? The power of God to soteria, to salvation, to deliverance, healing, for everyone who does what? Believe. That's the requirement of the gospel, to believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the gospel of Christ, for in it, The righteousness of man is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed. What is righteousness? The word righteousness is di... uh, Put it up there for me. Yeah, there it is. Di... 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 Is how it's pronounced. Something like that. Don't... (laughs) All right. Something close to that. All right. What did you say it was? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And what it means is right standing. Total acquittal free from all guilt, purity of life. You're perfect in God's eyes. And this is the centerpiece of the gospel. This is what gives the gospel its power, the righteousness of God. Notice it doesn't, here, put the verse back up there for me, please. For in the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed. That word of revealed is apocalypto. It means to be a revelation. It means a revelation of the righteousness of God. A revelation of the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, uh, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Can you put that up there for me in the amplified version? There's another key here why righteousness is so important. Righteousness is the power of the gospel. The righteousness of God is. And I'm going to explain that, but watch what, the, what it says in the Amplified. For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes, that's the righteousness of God, is revealed, watch this, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. What he's, what he's saying here is, when you believe that you are righteous by faith, The faith that you 
believe that I believe that, that I'm righteous by faith. He said that faith right there that you believe that is leads to the faith that it takes to live the, the life of justification. Everything, here, 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 maybe I confused you more right there. Watch this. For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes, that's the righteousness of God, is revealed, a revelation of that, both springing from faith. That revelation of the righteousness of God came from faith. You believe that. You became righteous because you believed in Jesus, right? As a result of that faith that made you righteous, that leads to the faith that arouses to more faith. The righteousness of God produces the faith that you need for everything else in the kingdom of God. Did y'all catch it right there? When you believe I'm righteous by faith, that's the faith that gives you everything else that you, all the faith that you need for everything else in, in the kingdom of God. If you know you're righteous by faith, that faith will produce the faith for your healing. All right? Do y'all get that? The f now, why? Why is that? Why is that? Is because righteousness, look over at Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Righteous, if you get rooted and established in righteousness, you know that I'm the righteousness of God. Here's what happened, Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Turn in your Bibles because I didn't tell them any of these passages. Y'all got it in your Bible? Watch this. Why righteousness is so important is right here. Therefore, having been justified, that word justified is the same word righteousness, dia, di, 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 asunu, whatever it was. Therefore, by uh, having been made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in life, what the devil wants to do is make you think that God's mad at you, that you've missed it somewhere, that God has something against you because you missed it. How many human beings are in this place? Okay, I'm waiting for all the human beings. Come on, okay. <laughs> Somebody doesn't have their hand up, please let the ushers know. <laughs> Amen. As human beings, we will all miss it and err. That's just who we are. We're human. You've made some mistakes in the past, you're gonna make some mistakes in your future. The devil will take and look at those mistakes and say, uh-huh, mm-hmm, see, that's a problem. That's why you're not blessed, that's why you're not. And then what you've gotta know is, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, therefore I have peace with God. I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. Hit the next one. Through, now watch, y'all. You have peace with God. What that means is he can never be angry with you. He's never disgruntled with you. Never. And what you do has nothing to do with that. Y'all still don't get that yet. That's huge. Your actions have nothing to do with you having peace with God. Nothing. If I walk up here right now, slap Bobby. Glasses go flying off. Pshaw! God's still in, still in love with me. Now, Bobby ain't going to like me too much. <laughs> Neither is Enda. <laughs> and I might catch a bullet. There's consequences for doing that. Isn't that right? But God ain't mad at me. Because my actions have nothing to do with that righteousness. The righteousness of God has been revealed. And when that righteousness of God and I get a revelation of that, I always know I've got peace with God. And I've got to know that. I've got to know that. Why? Because my dream is so big and yours ought to be. It's so big that it's, it's impossible for me to do it on my own. I don't have the ability to do it. Are you with me? I've got to have peace with God. And I've got to know that regardless of the mistakes I make, he's still on my side. He's still got me. He still got me because I'm going to miss it sometimes. I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm going to say and do some things that I shouldn't have done, like talking about slapping Bobby. I love Bobby too much. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are you with me? Watch this. Through whom, because we have peace with God, through whom also we have access by that righteousness of faith into this unmerited favor. Because I'm the righteousness of God, now that's my access code into this 
unearned favor, favor that I don't deserve, blessing and increase and abundance that I don't deserve, that I don't even qualify for, Jesus qualified for it. I got to know that. Watch. Here's why I got to know it. You'll see it in the next few verses. He said, there, he says, we have access into, by faith into this unmerited favor in which we stand. I'm standing in grace. You're standing on grace ground. Everywhere you go, every day, all, your, all day, every day of your life, you're walking in favor. Oh, y'all still don't get what favor means then. You get you have undeserved favor in everything you have, everything you do in your health. Undeserved favor from God. And if you receive enough of this, an abundance of this grace and the gift of righteousness, you get established in that. The Bible says you're going to reign in life. Romans 5, 17. Don't turn there. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice. Because I have the right, I'm the righteousness of God and I have access to this favor, I can rejoice in the co- hope. The word hope is elpis in the Greek. Write it down. Joyful, confident expectation of good. I rejoice in the joyful, confident expectation of the good, of the manifestation of the glory of God. What is the glory of God? It's the goodness of God. I expect the glory of God. Why? Because I'm the righteousness of God. I have peace with him. And because all of the, all of the sin that I will ever commit in my life, Jesus was punished for, and all the blessing that is on Jesus is now mine. And just like an inheritance, if you don't make claim to that, you can walk your whole life without it. You have to lay hold of that. Lay hold of this eternal salvation that you have. Lay hold on it. This is mine. It's rightfully mine. All right? In the grace in which we stand. And not only that. Uh-oh. Here we go. Tighten your, your spiritual seatbelt right now. Here's why you got to know you're the righteousness of God right here, Tia. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. I asked you when you came in, how many of y'all facing some trials, some tribulations, some testing time right now? Good. Now, you've got to know that you're the righteousness of God in order to make it through this successfully. Let me assure you, according to the scriptures, that trials are an indication that blessing is on its way. Oh, that's not just a cute cliche. That's not just a cute cliche. Um... Let's get, let me, let me finish this one and then I'll show you a few other places, all right? right? Right here, he says, but we glory in the tribulation. We get excited even in the, in the tribulation. Yeah. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Yeah. It's, teach, it's toughening me up. It's, te- it's teaching me to stick with this. Yeah. Right? Don't quit. Tell the person next to you, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Do not quit. Persevere, right? And that perseverance is going to produce some character in you. That character is going to, again, produce this joyful, confident expectation of good. It's sandwiched with hope. Listen, every day you've got to walk in this joyful expectation of good. i got to expect it. The only way you're going to be able to do that is know I'm in right standing with God. God's not mad at me. Because what's going to happen is, in your mind, the devil's going to say, uh-uh. See, the reason that you're struggling right now, the reason that you're going through this is right now is because you did this in your past and God's mad at you. He's, he's trying to teach you by punishing you. No, no, he's not. Amen. No, he's not. Amen. God teaches you with his word. However, he will use whatever the devil will try to use. If the devil throws lemons at you, Jesus is go- definitely going to make some good, sweet, sweet lemonade. Yeah. It's going to be very, very sweet. But you've got to know this. You've got to know right here, I'm going through a process. Per- I've got to persevere through this. It's going to produce character, and that character is going to bring me right back to a joyful, confident expectation of good. Hit the next one for me, please. Now hope. That hope that it produces in me, that joyful, confident expectation of good, this expecting good will not disappoint me. 
Hold up, hold up. If you have this joyful, confident expectation of good as a result of knowing you're the righteousness of God in Christ, therefore I have peace with God and I'm surrounded by favor all the time. I'm expecting this favor to manifest itself. I, this hope, this persevering, this character is going to produce more hope in me and that hope will not be disappointed. You better hope bigger and bigger. Hope for bigger, expect joyful, confident expectation of bigger things. Stop playing small games. Right. Expect bigger. We're dealing with the God of the universe. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Push the low expecting person around you. Say, stop thinking so small. Stop thinking small. Stop thinking about a job and start thinking about business. Stop thinking about just, just paying your house off. Think about paying mama and them's house off. Have you asked God yet? Yes. You know, there was a passage I was looking at today in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, Jesus was at the well of Sychar or something like that. And there was this woman who was there. And uh, you all remember? And this woman was there getting water from the well. And Jesus comes and said, hey, get me some water. And she said, ooh. And remember, she was caught off guard. She said, ooh, you're, I, you're a Jew and you're asking me for water and all that. And, and uh, he said, well, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me. He didn't condemn her about any of her. This is before he even busted. He, he didn't put her on blast. He was letting her know, I'm not mad at you, even though I already know that you had five husbands and the dude you're living with, the sixth dude, is not your husband. Amen. If you knew who I was, you'd ask me. Yeah. Get that. If you knew who I was, you'd ask me. If you knew who he was and who you are to him, you'd ask him for much more than you're settling for. And you'd expect that on a, on a regular basis. But there's going to be some trial and tribulation that comes. But he says, you got to know I'm going to persevere through this. I'm not going to quit. Tell your neighbor again, I'm not going to quit. You might as well just quit mess with me. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to outlast this trouble. I'm going to outlast this trial. I'm going to outlast. Why? Because I'm standing on his word, his righteousness. I'm standing on his. He's, his word is forever. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. If it was just on me, I may faint and quit. But I'm not standing on what I said. I'm standing on what he said. Do y'all know that God cannot lie? Oh, I don't know if y'all know that yet. Let me give you some verses just in case I see some new people. Turn to Psalms 138 and verse uh, 138 and verse 2. Psalms 138 and verse 2. Oh, I better turn to it because I didn't give them any of these verses. Y'all might want to just get it in a mode that I can show these verses. I don't think I'm going to do any more of my notes here. <laughs> Psalms 138 and verse 2. Look up here. David's writing. Y'all just jot it down or get the CD. I will worship towards your holy temple, David says, and praise your name for your Loving kindness. Your hased, that word is grace. That means your, your, your grace, your unmerited favor towards me and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. What does that mean? What, God, what David's saying here, what God is inspiring him to, to write here is that God, you have lifted your word above your name. What that means is all of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rapha, every, uh, God's too big to fit in one name, you know that. So all who he is, he is healing, he is abundance, he submits all of who he is to his word. Whatever he says is what he'll do. He'll submit who he is to what he says. I'm a healer, but I'll do what I said I'll do. I submit all of my name to who I am under what I say. His word is higher than his name. I still don't know if y'all get the magnitude of that. Watch this here. Let me give you another. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. God is not a liar. And he doesn't play with his words either. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. I better turn that. Amen. There it is. Ooh. Uh, is that it? No, that ain't it. Maybe I said Proverbs 30. Is that the right one? Maybe I said the wrong one. Oh, it's definitely not Proverbs 30, is it? Yeah, yeah, there it is. That looks right. 
Y'all had something else up there. Don't stop trying to trick pastor. I know, I know what I saw up there. Look at this. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Every word of God is absolutely true and pure. Amen. And he's a shield to those who will put their trust in him. Whatever he says, he's going to do. You put your trust in him, he says, that's going to become a shield to you. Put this one up there. Put this one up there if you can. All right. Ready? Uh, put uh, Psalms 89, verse 34 and 35. Psalms 89, verse 34 and 35. Write these down and then get the CD so you can, so you can stand on God's word and know that it's more sure than anything in the earth, anything in the heavens. His word is higher than all that. Oh, God, Psalms 89. Are you there? Look up here on the screen. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Next. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie. Cross out David's name and put your name in there. I will not lie to Bobby. I will not lie. I will not lie to any of y'all. God says, I can't lie to you. Mark that. See, see y'all got to get this. God, Jesus talks. He, you know, he isn't just talking to fill up space in the Bible. He doesn't make promises just to be cute. God's saying something because he wants you to stand out and believe it. Are y'all with me? Push the person next to you. Say, stop playing with this. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 89 and 90. Psalms 119, verse 89 and 90. The whole psalm is about the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. The whole psalm is all about his word. But watch this one. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled. It's a wrap. It's a done deal. Forever, your word is settled in heaven. Next, please. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. Your faithfulness endures. But pastor, I know this person. You, you mean that you trust Slick Willie, Drunk Deborah, over God and what he said. I'm faithful and it endures to every generation. If you're brave enough to call God a liar, please have the people move away from you. Well, thank God for grace. You establish the earth and it abides. All right, hit, hit this one for me. Y'all jotting these down? Put Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. Matthew 24 and verse 35. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. This is old school Bible study right here. You got to know he's not going to lie to you. If God said it, he means it. Whatever he says is true. And he holds it higher than he holds his own, his own name. Well, look at me. Here's Jesus saying it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. What he's saying right there, heaven and earth will pass away. I'll evict my own self out of heaven if one word of, my, of what I've spoken doesn't come to pass. You know that the whole universe is held in place by the power of his word. When God said, light be in the beginning, that light began and hasn't quit and was moving at 186,000 miles per second and hadn't stopped yet. Had to go and lean to the scientists here. <laughs> Amen. Y'all hear that? All right, turn over to this. One. Romans chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. You know... <sighs> The devil is so terrified of you standing on the word, standing on believing that God said, give and it will be given unto you. He's so terrified of you standing on the word of God regarding your healing, regarding your health, regarding your future, your abundance. He's so terrified. You know, the Bible says that the devil comes immediately for the word. Yes. Comes immediately. He comes to steal the word. Why? To shake you. To shake you. If you get settled on this and go, that's it. I'm, 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 I'm going to settle on this. And I'm not moving. I'm not going to be moved. Hell will throw its best shot at you. To try to get you to move. 
See if you're playing. Because Christians play. But if you determine, I'm not moving off of this. I'm getting everything he promised. I'm not playing with this. And you get mad enough, you're going to see an awesome, awesome life. Come on, tell that person next to you, say, we about to live the good life. We are about to enjoy the good life. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be. Come on, just dream for a second. Just see it for a second. See it for a second. See, don't limit what God will do based on your education, your ability, what you can do. Children of Israel said, can you, can you provide a table for us in the wilderness? The children of Israel, while they're out there in the wilderness, were tired of this manna, and they started complaining about God. Can you provide a table for us out here in the wilderness? Can you feed us out here in the middle of the desert? We want some, we want some uh, quail. You know what that God did? He had quail come landing down. Three, was it three cubits deep? A day and a half's journey out every direction. He said, I'm going to give you enough quail that it'd be coming out of your nose. It says that in the Bible. Don't play with me. And that's what God's saying. He's trying to let you know, I parted the Red Sea. I got the hairs on your head numbered. And you think I don't know you? I know what you're going through. Persevere if, you go, if you're not playing with this thing. For wh- where am I at? Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, it says, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Will your unbelief affect the faithfulness of God? No, not to anybody but you. Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. Come on, somebody. God cannot lie. Say it out of your mouth. God, you cannot lie to me. Now write these verses down so you can settle that and start standing on it. Take him at his word and say, you know, you get what I'm saying? Peter's out there on the water and the boat in a middle and a big storm. He sees Jesus walking on the water. Looks at Jesus and everybody's terrified. He goes, Jesus, that's you. Bid me come. Jesus said, come on. And he had to probably look at them and they're like, Pete, no, 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 don't stop playing, man. He's like, I'm going. If this is what it is, I'm going to do this. And he did it. And do you remember what the story said? It said when he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look at the storm, because he's walking on the water. He's walking on the water like, oh, snap. Then the Bible says he began to look at the storm, the severity of the storm, and he took his eyes and looked at the storm, and then it says he began to sink. Let me ask you something. Can you walk on water when it's 85 degrees? Is it easier to walk on water when it's 85 and sunny and the water is calm? Or is it easier in the middle, of, or is it harder when it, to walk on water in a storm? Who thinks it's easier to walk on water with no storm calm and 85 degrees of calm water? How many of y'all think it's easier to walk on water without a storm? Come on, just put your hand up. You can put it way up. Put it up. Come on, be bold. Way up, get scared. Throw it up. I'm, I'm proud. It's harder to walk on water when it's storming outside. How many? Come on. She backed out. She's like, oh, snap. Oh, where's everybody? Come on, y'all. She looked at her husband like, come on, dude. Why am I the only one? Let me ask you. When you get home tonight, turn on the water in your bathtub just this high. Try to walk on that water. The temperature of the water doesn't matter. The conditions in your bathroom don't matter. It has no bearing on walking on the water. Are you with me? The only reason he was able to walk on water because Jesus said so. But when he took his eyes off of what Jesus said and put it on the natural circumstances, which apparently have nothing to do with walking on water. Come on, y'all, try it. Try it in the little puddle outside. It does not work. Come on. You've tried it at the pool. I've tried it. Does not work. And it's calm. No kids splashing. Walking on water has nothing to do with anything other than what Jesus said. You, you walking in the impossible has nothing to do with anything except you stand on what Jesus said. If God said, I'm going to make you the head only and not the tail, you owe no man anything but to love him, he's going to make you debt free. And you, he didn't say ask and, and it should be ask and you got to figure out how I'm going to do it. 
ask and it shall be given to you. <laughs> we think it says ask and then you got to tell me what I'm supposed to do. No, I ask and you got to figure out what to do. <laughs> and then right, you start thinking, oh, well, God, how you, I'm, okay, God, I'm going to ask you to get me out of debt. No, no, stop being so cheap. God, get me out of debt and help me, whatever my annual income is now, make that my annual giving and make, uh, and help me get mom and them. And might as well get my kid. Let me, stop playing. This is God. Well, God, just give me a, you know, uh, you know, I'm not that smart, God, so just give me a part time, you know, just a job that, you know, I just want a little bit. Your righteousness doesn't have anything to do with, with this deal. It's his righteousness. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Push the person next to you and say, stop looking at you and look at him. Oh, Jesus. Amen. You can't walk on no water. Jesus made the water. Do you think that water is a problem to him? And it has nothing to do with how happy Jesus is with what you've done. How about this one? This Peter, uh, come on. Peter the, and, and John chapter 21. Peter and John chapter 21. Uh, they're all fishing because Jesus had died on the cross and now he's come back from the dead. But they're, they haven't been preaching or anything. They just, he, Peter's like, I'm going back fishing. Right? They're going on back fishing. Jesus shows up in John chapter 21. While they're out there fishing all night, have caught nothing. Jesus says again, hey, children, have y'all caught any, have you got any food? They said, None. He said, well, throw it on the right side. Throw, cash a net on the right side. Why would he say the right side? Why is that? Don't you know every detail means something? The right side. What does the right hand mean? Righteousness. What he's saying here, right, Benjamin means son of my right hand. Right hand. Right, right side always, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father it's righteousness it's a position of righteousness and authority throw the net on the right side why the right side because whatever you do do it in righteousness do it in my grace and righteousness and then what and you'll find some so so they cast and now they were not able to draw it in now they can't take it in because of the multitude of fish hit the next one for me watch this Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about John, John talking about himself, said to Peter, it's the Lord. Why? Because Peter represents the stones in law. John represents, John's name means grace, Honan. Grace is always telling the law what, who, where the Lord, what the Lord is really saying, right? Now, when Peter, Simon Peter saw that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. Hit the next one. And all, and, but the other disciples came in, a, in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 200 cubits dragging the net with fish. And then, as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Next. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you just caught. Gives them the credit for catching it. Simon Peter went up. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land. Catch the details of this. Catch this. They were, Peter, why, first of all, why in the world did Peter jump off that boat? <laughs> Walking water Peter, why did he jump out the boat? He always jumping out the boat. Why did he jump out the boat and swim to shore? He was, he was so excited. Why? Because just a few days ago, he said to Jesus, uh, Jesus said to him at the Last Supper, he said, uh, you know, uh, all of you guys are going to deny me. You're going to all be scattered. He said, not me. He said, now these 11 fellas? Yeah. He said, but I'm going to follow you to prison. I'll follow you to death. I got you. It was at night. Jesus said, before morning, you will deny me three times. Before, the, before that crow, that rooster crows three times. Before it's daybreak, you're going to be denying me three times. Nah, not me, not me. Guess what? Jesus is getting beaten and chained and taken, and it's, the Bible says the third, t- the third time Peter denied him, right before that, that, that rooster crowed, the Bible said with Jesus being beaten and taken, looked over at Peter right in his eyes. Peter was, oh, heard him, and he felt like, oh, my God, I can't believe I've done this. I can't believe that. But then when Jesus is over on shore, risen from the dead, <laughs> hey, y'all. Jesus ain't mad. He's actually still blessing him, even in Peter's jacked up state. He gives him a blessing, even though Peter is acting crazy. Peter's so excited that Jesus isn't mad at him. Peter's like, oh, snap. No, he did. (laughs) Then he went back and grabbed. 
he had some supernatural strength. They weren't, all of the disciples that were in the boat couldn't take the, put the fish in, put the net inside. Peter runs out there after he's already swam the shore, grabs it and pulls it in himself. Well, I'm telling you, if you understand how much God isn't mad at you and how righteous you are in spite of what you're doing, in spite of how you've missed it, you'll have some supernatural strength. You'll be running to Jesus. You will, you'll walk in abundance and wealth and Jesus will be sitting there barbecuing with his air Jesus is on. You know he has some sandals on. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. I'm tired of messing with y'all. Turn over to Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, or just look up at the screen. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. I just got to prove a point. Then we're going to go get some chicken. I heard a hearty amen back there with my baby brother. <laughs> y'all ever have any of those days when you could just feel like you could eat everything? I woke up like that this morning. I woke up, I'm sitting there drinking the coffee eating my grapefruit and going, this just ain't working out today. I can see this is not going. And in my mind, I told my wife, I should have told her, I said, baby, I said, man, wouldn't some, uh, wouldn't some waffles and some pancakes and some sausage and an omelet? She says, don't even say it. Too late. I want it. She goes, don't do it. And from that point on out, the rest of it, I didn't go. I haven't. But I want to eat. I, I want to drive through McDonald's drive through After I leave there, drive over to Burger King's drive through go across the street to Pizza Hut's drive through and just eat it all before I get home. Oh, excuse me. Church's chicken drive through too. Sorry, I digress. Look at Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. Pray for me. Art brought in some church's chicken. We still haven't told Shanae that yet. So Shanae's in children's ministry. But man, Art, thank you, man. Thank you. It put me to sleep in my office, so I was worthless the rest of the day. Yes. <laughs> Watch this. <clears throat> in joyful, confident expectation of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie... This eternal life, by the way, this eternal life is this Zoe life. It is not the just going to heaven. In joyful, confident expectation of the Zoe life of God, the abundant life of wealth and health and debt, freedom and joy and happiness, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time even began. You know, God, this wasn't the last minute thought for God. <laughs> Before the foundation of the world, he chose you and picked you. Saw you perfect in his sight. Placed you in the beloved. God has great plans for you. And it don't start when you get to heaven. The Bible says you're already citizens of the kingdom. It starts right when you determine, I'm getting that. Say a real ghetto. Just hit the person next to you and say, I'm getting that. Okay, y'all need some work with that, but... All right. All right. Let me, let, me, let me wind it up with this. God can't lie to you. You see that, right? I could show you a few other scriptures and numbers, and, but we won't go there. Watch this. But we said that, that this righteousness of God is the foundation for this. You've got to know that you're always right with God. But because he said this tribulation, this testing, this testing, and it's a testing an evil day that the Bible says where the devil is going to try to shake you, shake you, but God will use it for your good. Look over to this one. Look at this one. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. I want to encourage everybody that's going through a challenge right now. I want you to expect joyful, confident expectation of good in spite of it. This is, the, this is part of how it works. This is how it works. Watch this. Oh, thank y'all back there. Look at this one, y'all. First Peter chapter one, verse uh, one and two. Did I say, oh, no, no, six and uh, yeah, whatever y'all got that. Y'all got it right. I'm... In this, you greatly rejoice, right? Though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Mm. Mm. He said, in this you greatly rejoice, just greatly rejoice over this anyway, though now for a long while, for a little while, whatever challenge you're facing, know the day's coming where you're going to look behind and say, remember that? Remember that when we were broke? Remember we were believing God to pay that house off? Remember we were believing God to, to remember that? Say a little while. Little while. If need be, watch. If need be, you've been grieved by various trials. Next, next. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious. What is God saying here? He's saying, listen, listen. 
I didn't put this trial on you, but I'm going to use it to strengthen your faith, which is much more precious than stuff. You need this. You, you, you've got to persevere through this. Push your way through this. Push that person next to you. Say, push your way through. You're going to be all right. Push your way through. Don't quit. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Look at him. Keep looking at him. Keep coming to church. Isn't it amazing when you get under pressure, the first thing you want to do is just lay at home and go to sleep or go to McDonald's? I can't go to church today. I'm too, de I'm too depressed. That was like, yes, yes. What if you stayed home today? Didn't you need to hear what I'm telling you right now? Say, thank God for a pastor that hears from God. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, yeah. though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor. And he said that same faith that's being tested in this short while, he said that same faith is going to be found to be praise, to be honor and glory at the revealing of Jesus. The more you understand who he really is, listen, the more you get a revelation of who Jesus really is, the sooner you're going to be praising and giving honor to God. Oh, y'all, that was so good right there, y'all. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Encourage that person next to you. Say, it's going to be all right, don't just, just endure. We're we going to stand on the word. Hey, but don't stop dreaming big. Don't stop. Don't you dare stop. Don't let this thing that you're going through make you think that this is going to always be this way. I'm telling you, that's the voice of the devil right there. It's going to always be this way. It's going to be your 60th birthday is going to come around. Your 70th, you're going to be old and this is how it's going to be. The only reason he's saying that to you is to try and discourage you. Let's see what God says about it. You already heard a little bit of what he said. Let's look at another one. Here's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it's not going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. Please encourage the person next to you. Tell them it's not going to last forever. Baby. Yeah, yeah. This, this struggle ain't going to be forever. Come on, turn around and tell the person behind you. Somebody needs to know. Tell them behind you. It is not going to last forever. So don't you dare let the devil or your friends or your mama and them discourage you. Don't let it happen. Some people you just got to cut off to say, I can't, I can't talk to you right now. You know, it's, uh, you know uh, I can't talk to you right now. Maybe in about another month or so, I'll holler back at you. But you don't even have to tell them. Just don't. Uh, 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 uh. Ignore. Bam. Girl, where you been? I've been trying to get a home. Girl, I've been so busy, I ain't had time to talk to you. Don't take it personally. I haven't been time to talk to anybody right now. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. This trial is not going to last forever. However, it is working out something much bigger and better. So he gives us some advice here. Don't look at the things which you're seeing. Don't focus on what you see. Yeah. Do y'all see the continuity of this? Yes, yes, yes. Don't focus on what you see. You got to focus on Jesus. And I'm just about to get to my message, but I'm not going to do it tonight. This is right where I need to preach where I started this afternoon. <laughs> this is right where I need to get it because the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And if you read it in the Amplified, put that verse up there for me. I'm going to get back to this one. Y'all know this one. Y'all read that one? Read that Why we do not look at the things which are seen, the problem, the trouble, the lack, but the things which are not seen, the promise of God. I don't see it yet, but I'm keeping my eye on it. For the things which are seen, they're temporary. This trial is temporary. This lack is temporary. This debt is temporary. Why? Because God cannot lie. He said, the devil's going to test me on this, but persevere. Oh, God, you cannot lie. You're seeing me through this. And I ain't quit. I am not turning back. No turning back. Make you want to sing one of them old songs. Look at this. Look at this. What is this? Oh, is that, uh, since we can serve, put, put up there, uh, 
uh, Hebrews 12 and 2, amplified. Hebrews 12 and 2, amplified. Real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. It's only 8.15, we good. That double quarter pound of cheese is going to be the bomb, though. I'm just telling you right now. Don't tell Shanae. Don't tell Shanae. Just, I drove by myself. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. As long as she don't get in the car tomorrow. My car. Watch this. Looking away from all that will distract. That's right. To Jesus. Everything else will distract you. If, you. if you focus on your problem, if you focus on the storm, you've got to look to Jesus. Looking away from all that will distract you. You've got some relatives and friends that will distract you. And they're just frustrate your purpose. They've been planted. Only people who can really frustrate you are people who can do this to you. <laughs> they got your number. People ain't got your number. They don't bother you. They come into your office once in a while. You just say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to be in the back until they get out of here. I can't. They're going to say something stupid. And I don't want to beat up nobody. And, and pray, praise the Lord. I ain't trying to get arrested. Looking away from all that will distract to looking to Jesus. Y'all get that? All right. Uh, we got 713. Do I need to go there? Let me show you this other one. Let me show you another one. Let me show you. Go back over to Psalm 66 and verse 12. Psalm 66 and verse 12. I'm giving you a bunch of verses today to let you know, yes, don't be, right. don't count it strange by the fiery trial, which is to try you. Right. The trying of your faith works some things. It works some patience. So don't panic over that. Just know I'm right with God. Right. It'd be different if God was mad at me. I mean, I'm hopeless. If God's against me, I might as well just throw in a towel. But he's not against me. He's for me. He's not mad at me. He's with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. When they threw Joseph into the pit, he was still like, okay, all right, this is a bad day. This is a bad day. Yeah, this ain't looking right. This is not looking right. My own brothers. Uh-oh, what they say? Oh, no, he did not say kill him. He's in the pit hearing all this. Did y'all hear that? They, read it. They were eating right up there, right out by. He, he could hear everything like, hey, y'all, y'all, what's up? Like, okay, we're going to kill him, right? right? He's like, oh, heck no. It was a bad day. But then, what, then Judah said, no, 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 don't kill him. Let's sell him. We can make some money off this dude. Oh, no, they didn't say sell me. It was turning bad, right? So they sell him. Change. Slavery, right? God gave him a promise, but he's still holding on to that. Ends up being a slave. Chains. Come on, y'all. I don't care if you're in charge of the house. A slave is not good. Freedom is better than slavery. Somebody better say amen in this house. Freedom is better. While he's a slave, even though he has favor there, even there the Bible says he is a blessed man. Do you know wherever you are right now because you're on favored ground and God's not mad with you, at you, you are rich? If you were without hope, had no hope because you weren't saved, now you got some real problems. You're safe. Even if you fell over, and you won't, but you fell over dead right now, you'd be, you wouldn't even know it. You'd be in heaven talking about, where did all the people go? Oh, snap. You with me? You wouldn't even know. We'd be sitting there trying to bring you back to life. You'd be like, leave me alone. I'm good. I'm good. Let it go. Let it go. I ain't coming back. They're going to be all right. Now, you think that the Bible says that there's no more pain in death. The sting of death is gone for us. Yeah. Dying is not a problem anymore. He took the fear of death away. Don't, don't be scared of that. Are you with me? There's no more problem for a Christian. Now, here's the challenge facing. Here's the battle right here. You keep getting your eyes off of the problem and putting them on Jesus. That's your battle. And let me help you do that I'm in my closing seconds here. All right? Look, let me show you this again. I wanted to show you this other passage too. Psalm 66. Did y'all write it down? Verse 12. Watch this. You have caused men to ride over our heads. This is, a, this is about the children of Israel. He said, God, we were crushed. We were being crushed. We went through the fire. Anybody been through some fire? Maybe you're in the fire right now. Look at this. It even gets a little worse. He said, ah, we jumped right out of the fire, right into the flood. Looked like we was drowning. It looked bad. Pastor, that's right. I went from the, from the fire to the flood. It looked bad. But look at the third part. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment, to a wealthy place, it says in the old King James. So if you've been through water, you've been, uh, been through fire and through a flood, the only next place to go. And if you persevere, you're going to come to your wealthy place. 
Fire and flood comes first, then the wealthy place. Come on, somebody. Say, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. I know that's right. No, no. Y'all get it? You're getting built up enough for bigger than what you can imagine. All right, all right, all right. Isaiah 61 and 7. Dag on it. I just keep giving you more verses. Too many to write, write them down, but this will, this will be something to chew on until you get back Sunday. Oh, God, Shanae has a message for y'all that is so awesome and encouraging. So awesome. Please be here Sunday. Bring your mama too. And I ain't talking about your mama, just saying because it's Mother's Day. What, what verse did I just say? Isaiah something. Isaiah 61 and 7. This may be my last one. Oh, let me see. Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to build. Ooh, I'm going to show you one more after this. That's it. That's it. And then we're going to go get some chicken. Instead of your shame, anybody been put to shame? You've been felt. You don't have to raise your hand, but you felt like this. God, I feel. All right. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Where you were been embarrassed and put to shame, he said, no, no, no. I'm going to turn that into double honor for you. Whatever you lost is coming back in double honor. Come on. I told you God can't lie. Stop looking at me like I'm making this up. I'm reading that out of his book. I ain't even telling him to write it. God, on his own accord, of his own volition, made these promises. All we have to do is say, okay, I believe that. I'm going to stand to it. I'm expecting that. Come on, somebody. And instead of confusion, you ever been confused? Oh, God, what am I going to do? Instead of being confused, they shall rejoice in their portion. They're going to rejoice in their blessing. Come on, somebody. All you got to do is believe it. Say, so just fake a smile or you, so that the devil thinks you believe it until you, till you study it and meditate on it enough. Just fake a smile. If you, if you keep walking around looking all sad and pitiful, nobody's going to feel bad for you, first of all. Just shake yourself. And I know some things get bad and it looks bad, but you shake yourself. You slap your own stuff. Hold on, hold on. Am I saying that God's a liar? You got to think about these things. Don't leave your brain off. Put it on and say, hold on, let me think about this a second, God. Okay. All right, okay, yeah, universe, Milky Way, okay, mm-hmm, you did all that, let me see, moon hanging up there, okay, this is not a problem for you, this is a process, you're not mad at me, you'll never leave me nor forsake me, Jesus is my high priest, okay, 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 yeah, 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 even if you don't get all these scriptures, I'm telling you, no, God can't lie to you, that's all you need to know. Instead of confusion, you shall rejoice You shall rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Not temporary joy. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. All right, this is the last one. I'm going to show you this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, and we close, and we go in to get it. All right, what are we going to get? I don't know. Chicken? Popeye's? Boy, y'all had that, uh, y'all had that okra over there, that fried okra? I can eat it out all the way till it's gone. Just drop a whole bag in there. No, 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 no. I mean the big white bag that y'all pour it out of. Just pour it all in there. Cook it all. I'll just eat all that. Just like popcorn. That would be cool at the movies, though, if they had fried okra. We'll be crushing it. Watch this. Here's what the devil wants to do. He wants to get you in the flesh. What is in the flesh? In the flesh is you focusing on your problem, focusing on your ability, focusing on anything other than Jesus. You, you're focusing, oh God, what am I? Uh-uh. Here's what you do. Jesus, I thank you. You're my high priest. And I had a whole bunch of scriptures, but come back. I'll preach it to you later. But here's what we're going to look at right here. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We're in these bodies, but we don't fight with this worldly system like that. We don't fight our problem in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. (laughs) In God, for the pulling down of strongholds. What is that? Here he's going to explain. Next. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is that? The knowledge of God. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. Grace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. What does that mean? Here's the knowledge of God in general about the, about the, God is not mad at you. He's given you grace and favor. You stand on grace ground. You're good with God. Anything that exhausts itself against that knowledge, he says, bring that thought. Every thought that says you're going to, not going to make it, 
No, because the Bible says you are going to make it. I just showed you. It says you're going to be reeling in joy, everlasting joy. It said you're going to have double for all your trouble, at least. It says that you're going, you're going to walk in health. You're going to, all the promises, anything that comes against that knowledge, bring every thought into the captivity, into captivity to the obedience of you. Because ah, the devil will say, no, 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 you're not qualified that, for that because you didn't do this exactly right. You didn't do that. It says, he says, take, don't try to bring that thought because it's thoughts. How many of y'all know the problem is right here in your mind? It's, it's battling that. What am I going to do? 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 God, how are you going to do this? What, what do I need to do? Give me an idea. What, I got to do that. Stop all that. He says, bring every thought into the captivity, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Here's what it means. The devil says, you aren't qualified because you didn't. He said, uh-uh. He did. Bring that thought into captivity of obedience of Christ. He was obedient. He was my high priest. God, God, I want to show. All right, I got to show you this so you understand what I'm talking about. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews, uh, before that, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't put it up here. That's in the bottom of my notes. I'm right at the bottom. Even though I skipped all the middle, right at the bottom. 1 John 4, 17. You already know it. Love has been perfected among us. Remember what it said about love in Romans? He said, he said because the love of God has been shed in our hearts, we have the, that we, our hope won't be disappointed. When, when you know how much God has loved you and that's been shed abroad in your heart, your hopes won't be disappointed. I know he loves me. He's going to bring to pass all the, the, the expectation of good that I'm expecting based on his word and my righteousness in him, right? Love has been perfected among us in this. We know that he loves us and is perfected and mature in us that we may have boldness in that day, that evil day, that day of testing, that day of trial. That's what that day is. You're not going to stand before Jesus in judgment. Do you know that? Yeah. Jesus is not going to judge you. Come on, I preached on that like four or five weeks in a row. There's therefore now no condemnation. I did not come to condemn. He received all the condemnation. There is no judgment for you. What is this talking about? Day of judgment is that day, that evil day, where you get under that testing, under that fire, in that flood, where the devil's trying to shake you. God says, "Uh uh-uh, have boldness in that day. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Why is that? Because he's the high priest. Hebrews chapter 2. Let me go through these passages real quick, real quick. Why? Because I always like to give you more than enough. Chew on this all week. Hebrews 2, verse 9. Mm. Amen. Is it there? Yes. Hebrews 2 and verse 9. Y'all got it? Here we go. And I'm going to go through those, just those that I have listed. Watch this. But we see Jesus. The Bible's telling us, uh-uh, don't look at any problem. Look at Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death, sin, sickness, poverty, condemnation for everyone that's what that's entailing right next inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood because we put on flesh and blood he himself likewise shared in the same he put on a body too that through death he might destroy him who had say had Had. the power over death sin poverty condemnation all that that is the devil next verse 17 therefore in all things he had to be made like us that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things for turning to God. A high priest. If we're the people, high priest comes out from amongst the people. If that big screen up there is God, the, the high priest comes out of the people and represents the people. However this high priest is, is how God views the people. The high priest comes from among the people. So the Bible said Jesus had to come here and be put on flesh and blood because we did. And he had to sympathize, feel every, every temptation, every sin, every hurt. He had to feel all that so he could be a merciful and faithful high priest. Come on, somebody. And the things pertaining to God so he could represent us right to make propitiation for all the sins of the people. Next, verse, chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, right? Came through the heavens, came down here, became one of us, then died, took all our death, all our sin, all our poverty, went back to the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. He said, don't you let go of what you're saying according to the promises of God. Don't let go of it. Why? Because we got a great faithful high priest. Next. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. 
Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly. Don't come timidly. Don't come sheepishly. He said, come boldly. Why? Because he's perfect now. And the way he comes, the way he is, is the way you are now. As he is, so are we. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. He said, come boldly and go get it. Chapter 5, verse 1, Hebrews. For every high priest taken among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Next. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray. He said, it don't even matter what your problem is. He can have compassion on it since he himself is subject to weakness. Jesus was, but he, was, but he didn't sin, right? Because of this, he is off, he is off uh, required as for the people. Uh, because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. Next. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he is called by God just as Aaron was. He says, nobody can appoint themselves a high priest. They have to be appointed by God. But Christ, Hebrews 11, uh, 9 and 11, I'm going to close and watch this. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. He was comparing himself to the, the, uh, the earthly high priest. He says he, he's, he didn't come like them. He came not with the blood of goats, uh, with bo- blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats under the old covenant and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying or the healing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He said you don't even have to have a sin consciousness. Don't even think about sin issue anymore. And for this reason, 915, and for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. All the, etern- all the inheritance of abundance of life that he made are all yours. And 11. I'm closing. Watch. And every priest stands ministering daily. He said the old priest had to stand there making sacrifices daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, our high priest, after he had offered one sacrifice for all everybody's sins forever, he sat down Amen. at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever. Say, that's me. All of us who are being sanctified. You're perfect in God's eyes because our high priest is perfect. So he says, now come boldly and get your inheritance. Oh, close your Bible. Y'all acting like I ain't preaching good. Close your Bible. Y'all receive that tonight? Oh, that's a, that, that was a buffet of stuff for you. That's a whole lot. You're going to have to hear that again and again. Go home and dissect it. Slow it down. Chew on it just like a cow chews on, on that hay and grass. Just keep chewing, keep chewing. That, I gave you about a month's worth right there. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the people of God. We are the people of God. We're your people called by your name in your righteousness washed and cleansed in your blood you paid the price for every one of us before the foundation of the world you saw us in the beloved you saw us in you and i thank you father that we're predestined to be conformed into your image so i thank you lord that whatever the people are going through i thank you that you are their strength You're their strength. You're their power. You are their all in all. And Lord, we'll eat more and more of your truth every day. We'll expect good things. We'll expect this joyful, confident expectation of the good glory of God. All the promises are ours right now. We'll expect it. Whatever trial, whatever fire, whatever flood, we will go through because we know that you're with us. Just like you were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like you were with Daniel in the lion's den. You'll never leave us. Never leave us, never forsake us. You're with us forever to the end of all times, to eternity. So we thank you, Jesus. We cannot do anything but overcome. We're more than overcomers. 
more than conquerors through him that loved us. Why don't you stand up on your feet and give God the biggest shout of praise you've given him all day today.